So uh, my name is Kyu Han. I'm working in Korean University, and this is co-work uh, with me and um, Professor Sudaram, who is in University of Arizona. Um, so as you can infer from title, uh, Deep Learning for Hate Speech Detection, a personality-based approach. In this study, what we do is basically um, develop a method that can identify hate speech, specifically focusing on personality uh, characteristics. Um, there have been... Uh, several studies uh, recently um, who uh, which have been focusing on personality characteristics to you know infer whether certain text is hate speech or not but the difference between their studies and our studies basically we focus more on um, deeper levels of personality characteristics which I'm gonna elaborate later on so um, before we talk about our method to give you a little bit of uh, background um, uh, as you can see, hate crimes are on the rise due to multiple reasons, including um, social media. So if you think about the echo chamber where, you know, people are um, isolated in silos, um, getting the same perspective, same opinions and so on, and, and they get, you know, negative attitude towards the, uh, the perspective that are not consistent with their perspectives and so on, right? And also the political polarization, which are the which is the same um, in a similar vein, um, it kind of prevents people from um, being open to other perspectives and hate speech as well. And also, um, economic inequality uh, kind of broadens the uh, um, the range of hate crimes. Um, you know, different groups of people hate each other and so on. And also, political tension between different countries, such as you know. Um, the tension between um, U.S. and China, uh, Ukraine and Russia, and even recently um, Israel and Palestine, and so on. Right. So as you can see from the below um, uh, the figure, um, this is the uh, the number of hate crimes um, um, reported by FBI, and as, as you can see, there is a, a increasing trend, uh, especially um, recent times. So um, hate speech is one of the um, causes of uh, physical hate crimes and uh, governmental authorities and even um, uh, unions of different countries such as EU, they're trying to regulate hate speech on uh, social media platforms or other platforms where people can share their ideas. So um, the reason why we need to regulate hate speech is from social perspective, as I just told you, um, it is directly included uh, uh, directly related to the physical hate crimes. And also um, in terms of the human rights, we have uh, a duty to protect the vulnerable people and his speech kind of harms them, right? So um, it is also related to human rights. And eventually, um, you know, if we want to achieve the social harmony, um, his speech is uh, the things that we must mitigate. But not from not only from social perspective, we also have a motivation from business perspective to regulate hate speech. For instance, um, hate speech is known to have a detrimental effect on trust among online community members. So basically, um, if we have a speech on certain platform, it means that there is a high higher rate of uh, defection rate of these members. And from a monetary perspective, you know, advertisers hate haters, which means that if certain platform, social media platform is known for hate speech, probably there is a less likelihood of advertiser um, uh, conducting um, advertisement on the, that platform. And also um, there is a social platform, uh, social pressures for these platforms known for hate speech, uh, such as public criticism or governmental pressure and so on. So these are all business perspectives related to regulating hate speech. So um, against this backdrop, um, in this study is uh, in this study the research question that we ask is pretty simple: How can we develop a computational tool that can help mitigate hate speech? And um, recently, there have been a lot of studies, uh, numerous studies that are related to this research question. Um, but the motivation behind our uh, paper and um, the, the, the motivation behind other papers are slightly different because we are focusing on the relationship between personality and hate. Um, so as I told you at the beginning of the presentation, um, this correlation or relationship between personality and hate has been emphasized recently. Uh, there is a growing interest of applying personality information 
um, in hate speech detection, as you can see from the references. Um, but most of these studies, uh, unlike our study, use personality characteristics defined at an abstract level. So um, when I mean by abstract level, I mean by a higher level of personality characteristics. So for instance, um, one of the largest, uh, one of the, uh, the most uh, used uh, personality characteristics in automated hate speech detection study is a uh, big five personality traits, which uh, divides personality into five different categories, including, for instance, agreeableness, uh, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and so on. Right. Um, uh, instead of doing that, uh, instead of focusing only on the abstract level of personality characteristics, what we do in this study differently from the prior studies is we propose a method that use not only high level personality features, but also low level personality features. So, for instance, in psychology literature, um, there is a, a facet, uh, what's called facet level personality features. It is more detailed version of big five personality traits. Specifically, um, each of the big five personality traits, uh, it has six different facet level personality traits. So it captures more detail um, or nuanced level personality traits regarding certain person or certain text. And also, um, in addition to the low level personality features, what we focus in this study is what's called intermediate personality features. So in psychology literature, it's a relatively new concept. So um, what researchers in psychology argue that there might be some intermediate personality features that connect low-level personality features and high-level personality features. Um, so basically, um, there are two different types of intermediate personality features. One is uh, within factor personality, intermediate personality feature, and the other is a cross factor uh, intermediate personality feature. So the former is um, the intermediate personality features that captures the interaction between facets, which are the low level personality features that belong to a single factor, which is high level personality features which is equivalent to one of the big five personality traits. And the latter one, which is across uh, factor intermediate personality features, it is related to the interactions between facets across different factors. So um, I'm gonna elaborate on how we incorporate this idea into our method in the next slide, but basically these are the, some of the differences that we identify between our study and uh, the prior studies. So um, this is a simple um, diagrammatic representation of our method. So we have two large uh, process. So in the first process, we develop a method, which is automated personality inference method. And in the second, uh, we develop automated hate speech detection method using the information derived from the automated personality inference method. So um, uh, in terms of methodology wise, uh, in terms of methodology, um, there is nothing new about our method. It's just the application of the existing ideas with some of the ideas we borrow from psychology literature. So for instance, um, automa for automated personnel inference method, what we do is we use you know, existing transformer, um, going through the conventional fine tuning process, um, using uh, the personality scores um, derived from the tool called IBM PI. Um, so IBM PI we consider as a, a teacher and um, we develop a student model um, using conventional fine tuning process to develop a method that can infer personality characteristics from text. So as you can see, uh, it is uh, noted as a P1 to P35 scores, personality scores, which is equivalent to um, the combination of big five personality factors and 30 personality facets. Um, so each of the big five, again, each of the big five personality factor, it has uh, six different facets. So in total, we have 35 different um, personality scores. So using these scores, we develop a automated hate speech de detection method, which includes four different components. So one of the components is semantic encoding, which is the conventional way of encoding um, text into the embedding using a pre-trained language model. And the other component is raw personality scores. 
And the other two components are slightly uh, what makes our study slightly unique from the uh, prior studies. So one is local local intermediate personality traits, and the other is global intermediate personality traits. So as I have said, um, the local intermediate personality traits it captures the um, interactions between personality facets that belong to a single personality factor. So that's why we have applied multi-headed self-potential layer for each of the facets set that belong to the personality factor. For instance, uh, agreeableness, neuroticism, optimism, and so on. And global intermediate personality traits, unlike local intermediate personality traits, it captures the interactions between the facets across different factors. So instead of applying a separate multi-head self-attention layer, we just apply a multi-head self-attention layer for all of the uh, to all of the personality facets. So basically, thirty different uh, personality facet scores. So these are the details of local intermediate personality factors and global intermediate personality factors, and the number of uh, uh, heads uh, we identified as two for each of the local uh, intermediate personality factor based on the prior uh, literature in psychology, because they identified that there might be two uh, local intermediate personality factor for each factor, and for global we had. Ha we have we have set the uh, uh, the number of heads to be ten, also according to the prior literature in psychology, which identified that there might be ten around ten local uh, global intermediate personality factors. So data set that we have used are two: uh, WikiHeight, which is uh, the comments, uh, the set of comments collected from Wikipedia, and also WikiHeight was used to um, uh, train our personal personality inference method. And also the other one uh, that we have used was Spermistate, uh, which is the comments collected from stormfront.org, which is white spermist uh, 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 social media. So these are the two data sets that we have used for training and evaluation of our method. So um, the result shows that, um, so for the personality inference method, we have tested different uh, pre-trained language models. And Roberta uh, achieved the highest performance, uh, mean absolute error of 0 0.006. So we have used that for using, uh, we have used that for inferring personality uh, scores. And using that scores, we have developed hate speech detection method. And as you can see, we have tested um, Bert, Roberta, Electra, and we have done the uh, Appalachian analysis. And on top of that, we have also uh, added the Google, pers Google perspective as a baseline, which is a proprietary model developed by Google for um, identifying hate speech. And as you can see in overall, the uh, combination of different components, uh, specifically different personality components that we have included in our study, kind of um, uh, maximize its performance uh, in both uh, a data set for both data sets. So for implication, although this is uh, from methodological perspective, we do not uh, develop any new um, research, uh, methodological framework. Uh, we have some implications because um, this is one of the first study to use a psychology theory for developing a computational hate speech detection method. And uh, our idea, our approach, we think that it can trigger the interdisciplinary efforts in the domain of hate studies. And also from performance uh, perspective, we also show strong performance in multiple, specifically two different domains. Um, so this is the end of my presentation. And if you have any question, um, you're welcome to ask. Thank you.